Before I start, I want to ask Pastor Karen, uh, how long do I need to go? Do we have all the signatures that we need? <laughs> For my VBS. All right, she's going to make sure, so here we go. Fasten your seat belts because we're going for a while. Our scripture reading for today is, comes from the Psalm 20th, and I'll be reading all of it. I pray the Lord answers you whenever you are in trouble. Let the name of Jacob's God protect you. Let God send help to you from the sanctuary and support, from, uh, support you from Zion. Let God recall your many grain offerings. Let him savor your entirely burnt offering. Let God grant that what it is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. Then we will rejoice that you've been helped. We will fly our flags in the name of our God. Let the Lord fulfill all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed one. God answers his anointed one from his heavenly sanctuary, answering his mighty acts of salvation, achieved by his strong hand. Some people trust in chariots, some others in horses, but we praise the Lord's name. They will collapse and fall, but we will stand up straight and strong. Lord, save the king. Let him answer us when we cry out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. God, I give you thanks that you allow us in this time to meditate upon your word. Use me as your instrument that everything I'm just about to say come from you and be for the edification of your church. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you say that ads are everywhere? Everywhere you turn, there's an ad. Amen. So if you turn your TV, you're going to be bombarded by ads. If you have your phone and you're on Facebook or whatever, you're going to just ads, 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 right? If you're driving, even these now spectaculars are now, you know, even changing. It's like huge TVs that you now can see, and they're just, send, you know, putting ads. And I was amazed by all these ads that are everywhere in our lives. I mean, probably right now you're receiving a, a beep or somewhere in your phone saying, buy this amazing thing. If you bought this, you may want this other thing, right? Amazon, amen? So all these, all these people, all these products or all these, all these ads are for you to buy a particular product that guarantees you uh, satisfaction for you. And not only that, but a lot of them are that you can deposit your trust in that particular product, right? So let us put the first, the first uh, image right there. So, you know, toiletries, right? You can, you can find shampoos that you trust that they're going to make your hair grow or they going to make your hair shiny or blonde or black, dark, whatever. You can trust that they're going to do that. You have the best razor or the, the, best, the best smell, right? Next slide. You can, uh, well, those are the transformers, of course, but <laughs> cars, they're selling you cars, and they say, you can trust this car because it has the best safety features. You will not happen anything to you because this car is the best car we have built, and you can trust us. Next slide. Any bank will say, you can trust us to put your money here, invest here, and we're going to give you a lot of money back, uh, little interest, and, uh, but you can trust that we're going to take care of your money and your funds and retirement and on and on and on. Next, next slide. And of course, that always oh, kind of looks, anyway, that's my mistake. Anyway, but insurance companies, right? They, you can trust that they're going to take care of you as long as you don't see the small print in there and you know, have to pay your deductible, but they will take care of you. All right, so Geico can save you money. All state is going to be with you at all times, right? You can trust. You can trust them. So I have a little jingle for you to uh, get into your brains. Have you tried one? Have you tried one of these? It is so good. Man, I can't believe we haven't done this before. Oh wow, look at that. On a bike. You're aging. Do the jingle. Do the jingle. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hey guys. Uh, do it again, do it again. Like a good neighbor, stay Farm is there. 
Start in my office! State Farm. I think we're good. <laughs> State Farm agents are there when you need them. Whenever you need them, they're gonna be there. You can trust! You can just do the jingle and say, like, Stay Farm, take me out of here to stop listening to Carlos, and he's going to take you out of here. <laughs> now, there is nothing wrong with uh, trusting in toiletries and shampoos that are going to make you smell good. Thanks be to God for that. <laughs> Especially when we're in close encounters. Thanks, to, please be to God for shampoos and soaps and everything. And there's nothing wrong to buy a car that it is good in safety features. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong to try to find a bank that gives you good rates and uh, takes care of your funds. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with Finding an insurance company that is going to take care of you, and actually I urge you to have insurance of your car, your renter's car, your renter's insurance, or your homeowner insurance. I, I urge you to have that. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, is when we fall into this notion that if we only have these things, everything is going to be fine. And we fall into this trap to trust things, to trust people, to trust companies, to trust whatever it is, and we put God way over there. And we say, well, if I have all state, why do I need God? If I have, you know, Optimus Prime as a car, why do I need a God? Why do I have this fancy car? I have all these zeros in my, in my bank account. Why do I need God? Well, the psalm today that our scripture passage for today, if you heard it, I bet you were paying attention, right? Uh, it, is, it is a psalm that many scholars placed where the people of Israel were in, in, in trouble. It seems that they were going to be invaded, maybe even in a, in a cease already, and maybe in the middle of war, and they are praying to God for, for deliverance. Uh, it may be on their... Egypt's rule, or Assyrian's rule, or many others that came and conquered them. They were, if you remember, uh, the people of God were not necessarily mighty warriors. Uh, they were priests to the world. So each time that some superpower came and invaded them, they basically beat them. So they were praying to God for deliverance. And there's a particular verse in this psalm that I want to emphasize for us today. Verse 7. Some people, says the psalmist, some people trust in chariots and horses. Now, chariots are mentioned, believe me, more than 100 times in the Bible. Through, through all the New Testament. Why does the chariot is such a thing for them? What, 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 is, what is the big deal about him? So think about it. The first one is just kind of the uh, obvious. It's a, it's a military power, right? If you have 100 of these or 200 of these, you know, galloping fast to, toward you, I mean, you're going to be uh, crying because they're going to they're gonna trample you or they're going to shoot an arrow up to you. So that is the obvious. You know, it's military power. But also is technological power because these, believe it or not, these, these chariots have technology so that they don't, you know, roll over, that the uh, horses are comfortable, that the uh, riders are comfortable so that the shooter can actually be accurate on shooting. So it has a lot of design into it. So it's a technological advancement. It is like the, uh, I don't know, it is like the uh, Apache of their time, Apache helicopter of their time, right? For those who know what that is. <laughs> uh, it is also a, a, uh, a, 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 a resource. It shows how much resources you have. Because you have to build these things, and they're not cheap, right? And you have to pay the person or persons to build these things, to build the arrows, to support the archers, to support the horses, to train the horses. So it shows that if you trust, it says, some people trust in chariots. Some people, we can say, trust in their might, in their power. Some people trust in the technological advancements. Some people trust in how much resources they have. In other words, some many people trust 
in everything they have created. But the psalmist says, I, we, what? Praise the Lord. We trust alone in the Lord. Now imagine that. They are again, as I say, it's a small kingdom. And they can be praying, God, you know, you are, you are the God. Can you please give us, give us a break and give us like 300 of those chariots for us too, to defend ourselves? Can you give, give us a thousand archers or, I don't know, huge walls that nobody can bridge? The psalmist does not pray for any of that. The psalmist says, some trust in chariots, in horses, but I, but we as people, trust in the Lord. Now you can say, well, Carlos, they, 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 uh, they were defeated in battle. Well, maybe. But we're not reading any Persian or any Assyrian spiritual book, right? We're reading the Bible of those who they conquered. Because it is the, the word of God and the power, and if we trust, what I'm, what I'm going with this is, if we trust no matter what is going to happen, no matter what difficulty is going to be before us, we can trust that God is going to be with us throughout. Amen? Can I hear an amen? amen? So no matter how many power we may have, no matter how many zeros we may have in our accounts, no matter how technologically savvy we may be, all that is put to, to the side if we only can cling to God, if we can only trust to God. Now, this word trust is kind of interesting, and I think God had a, a plan on that. The word in Hebrew means, yes, trust, faith. in my studies, uh, that faith is something that you also build, you grow into it. In other words, is, you know, we preachers say, well, you just have to have faith, right? You just trust in God. And say, well, preacher, for you it's easy. Well, how that works? But the, the word faith, trust, is something that we are trusting in God. 
That it is not something that just comes and happens. It is something that we just little by little, little by little, we let go of the insurance company, we let go of the cereals in the counter, we let go of the everything, and we just give a little bit more to God, and they give a little bit more to God, until we are fully trusting in God. And that may take our lifetime. Of course, we are growing into perfection. So we don't, if we do not trust fully, we don't have to be, feel shame. We just have to work at it, like anything else. Like anything else. Some trust in chariots, but I'll trust in the Lord. But we will trust in the Lord. So I have some homework for you today, this, 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 this week. All right? Who, what, who is up for homework? Amen? All right. So this week I would like to, I will invite you to... Meditate upon, to think about the chariots in your life, in our lives. Which things we don't just don't let go, 